See if I can adjust this thing. Top chat, live chat. I want all messages available. Here we go. Hey Kelly, how we doing? How we doing? How are we are we okay? We've got a little. Uh, this is the practice rig. I think it's gonna run out of batteries <laughs> pretty soon, but that's okay. <laughs> voice low low on spoken volume hang on we might have a solution for that we might have a solution for that I wonder if the old uh, earplugs I, I Lucas is saying it sounds okay let's see I reached in my backpack and I got these are my favorite, favorite travel snack these things are so good um, I have to be careful because I could eat a whole bag of those without even trying that's mandatory. Um, I've got the old Xbox and a red stripe right there. Also mandatory. Um, let's see. Let's see if we got a solution over here. I wonder if I can, if I can put these in and get a get a scenario. Looks like you guys can hear my, my speaking better. Let's see if we can Bluetooth those bad boys in. Let's see if we can believe. Now let's see how we got. See if that helps. Can you hear me now? Can you hear my iPad in the, can you hear my voice in here? Buffering? Is this better for the voice? Yeah. Can't hear the guitar. What if I do it like this? Tell me when you can. Is that better for it? Is that better for the guitar? Yeah. Well, I think it's either the thing where the guitar sounds good or the voice sounds good. Go back to before and point the practice mic. No guitar, worse. Uh, the, but the voice. How about the how about the voice? What about voice? Beer while you guys tell me what's going on. If nothing else, voice is good. The voice is good. Okay, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll hang tight. 
um, and just do some Q&A for a little bit. Uh, we'll do some Q&A, and then if we need to get, get to some picking, then we'll switch it back. But I'm going to assume you guys can hear me because I can see what you got going on. I've never really tried to do this from iPad, and it's actually really nice. Like, There's actually a really um, cool little way that it scrolls the questions up that's, that's like. That's that's really nice over here on the side. First question: What beer is this? This is uh, the old Red Stripe Light. I am on a bit of a bit of a getaway, an excursion down in Jamaica. Uh, family thing that was that was planned uh, a while back, and uh, it was uh, you know kind of a double birthday kind of uh, not for me, but a uh, retirement thing. You know, a whole lot of whole lot of special folks all having a lot of things going on, and we kind of planned. They 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 planned this trip, and you know, I got to go in there, um, and so yeah, down in Jamaica, got a little, little bit of a back glow right here. I wonder if it's the uh, lighting's a little better if we do it like that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's good to hang though. I'm good to see. It's no mullet. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not a mullet. It's just this is just like hair when it's got, got hat hair and it's just a mess. So no more. Uh, yeah. Cheers, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Hope everyone's doing well and having some good times wherever you are. Uh, and I thought it'd be great just to dig in to some Q&A. Now, I have some questions in the old Instagram loaded up, but I wanted to give you guys first crack at the questions. So uh, for me, for me, vacation never really starts and stops, like working from home, whatever you want to call that. As a touring musician, as a session player, as a guy that does overdubs and albums and and, and class and all this stuff from home, I never really go to work and I never really go home, if that makes sense. So even being on this vacation, uh, I was like, man, you know, we had the Vidami folks, folks. Uh, ask if we we're going to do the stream. I was like, let's do it, baby. Let's roll. Like just cause we're out and about doesn't mean that we can't do a really fun live stream and something a little different. Um, and yeah, great question right there. I just saw it come, come in uh, hard shell or soft shell. And it's this, uh, this gig bag right here that sir, sir gives you look at that thing. And what's really cool about it is it fits in the, uh, the overheads of uh, your average, um, even your smallest aircraft, like do you guys ever fly and you have the aircraft that's got one row of seats and then two rows of seats? That's the aircraft that uh, I take out of Knoxville very often. And uh, when I do, uh, I, you know, I got to make sure that the uh, the old gig bag will, will load up in it. So this is the one that I take. Um, also, I want to advise that there's a really great gig bag that is made by Reunion Blues that allows you to carry two guitars in it and it's not much thicker than this it's not much thicker than that one but uh it it's it it's the same length the thing that will get you in trouble to set this beer down and i apologize if the chair is just squeaking all over the place um the thing that will get you in trouble is the length of the gig bag right so from one end to the other and and, and that's what i always look for when i'm looking for travel gear is what is uh what is the, the the shortest gig bag that I can get? Because that really makes a difference. Scott North. Scott North is right here. Let's see. Take a look here at it. Scott North says, hello uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Do you write songs with vocals or assist uh, with any writing for any artists you work with? Yes, I do. Actually, uh, starting out early on, I was in I was in a band called Down From Up. And I wrote vocals with that band and uh, wrote lyrics. And for me, it, it, I can actually, it, it helps me write a better, more well-crafted song if I even just mush mouth fake words. And, and, and like, um, I like, you know, if I've got something like, uh, you know, you know, like, uh, like makes you think that major seven thing, right? Like, like if I just mush mouth words, it helps me. And then I, I lay that down, whether it just be a voice memo app on my phone or whatever. And then from there, I go in and I start 
uh, taking swings at what this, what I think the story would be for the song. And uh, that really helps, helps me write with Kennedy Woodband. You guys probably check that out at some point or another. Kennedy Woodband, uh, Dave and I have gotten to where we really like to write, you know, just coexisting. Neither one of us is writing a segregated kind of thing. Now we're kind of looking at just both of us writing the, the, the parts. Chuck Keller is saying the Paul McCartney ham and eggs technique. Yeah, I love that, dude. I freaking love that. Um, Sahar Bar says, are there two guitars 69 No. And, and as a matter of fact, the guitars sit upright like this right here. This is a really great guitar. This is my first Sir. The first one I ever got. Uh, very much like the Guthrie Govan kind of looking uh, guitar. Really a big fan. Really slinky feeling. Like this one, for whatever reason, just feels extra slinky. I don't know if it was necessarily these tuners. This was an older era of tuner. You can see John signed the headstock on it. Mahogany uh, neck, mahogany body, uh, Pal Ferro fretboard, maple top, uh, SSH plus SSV. Really kind of a straightforward kind of ride. We'll get in some picking here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. All right. Troy is in the house. Troy, how you doing? Andy, what's your experience with the Synergy amps? I saw your picture on the website. I was curious as I wanted to take a dive into the Synergy uh, realm recently. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to try to bring up a picture. Well, I can't. I, don't, I can't. I can only be on one device at a time. I'm about to say, I'll look at a picture of it. Oh, okay, so the Synergy gear is really cool because I think of it like a bit like an analog Axe FX. Uh, Synergy makes these rack mount preamps, and they plug into this full kind of uh, like a full rack unit. And you can put one module and one module. So you have one rack that's got two modules in it. And then the different preamps uh, are made to emulate real amplifiers preamps. Here's where it gets interesting. This is a little known fact, and I hope that I'm not telling things. I hope I'm not telling you how the sausage is made. But there is a manufacturing plant, and if you've ever been to NAM, you've seen the big brick wall booth of boutique amp distribution. Cheers. Boutique Amp Distribution, they, uh, they, I don't know what the right word is, maybe license. Anyways, they are the manufacturing facility for Bogner, Diesel, Saldano, uh, Synergy. They've got to deal with Wampler. It's like all this like in-house kind of thing. Friedman, right? All these big, big players in the game. And so when these preamps are designed, they're actually designed with Peter Dietzel and with Mike Saldano, with Dave Friedman. So the preamps are killer. The technology is a technology that, if I'm not mistaken, dates back to uh, Bruce Agnator. I don't want to say that's 100% the fact, but I think there was a, a partnership that Bruce Agnator and, and, and Randall did at some point. There was a modular preamp kind of design. And uh, again, I'm not saying that this is fact. This is just what I'm recalling from memory. Uh, but Synergy has got uh, partnered up, and if I'm not mistaken, Steve Fryett is building the power amps. Fantastic guy right there. Steve Fryett is famous for VHT, VHT amplifiers, and Fryett and all that stuff. Fryett Power Station, all these types of pieces of gear. Uh, um, Greg is chiming in here saying Steve buys new amp is Synergy. Yes, exactly. So when you, you think of this thing, you have to buy the preamp, then you have to have a power amp for it to go through, right? It's not just like you're buying one piece of gear. You're actually buying a very modular kind of system. You have the preamp. You have the thing that it goes in like the dock almost. And then you have to have a power amp for it. Now, you can get everything Synergy name brand. But if nothing else, you can get the dock. And it can be a single dock or it can be a, a two-sided dock that goes in. And it, and, uh, it, it whatever, connects to each other. And then you can use any power amp that you want. Or you could use the 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 fry at the, the the synergy i have the whole rig this the synergy power amp um i've got a currently i've got a blown power tube in that power amp uh but i love it it sounds great i've used it with all kinds of different artists um really powerful flexible kind of rig uh no pun intended with the vi thing but the preamps that i really love i love the friedman preamp i love the soldano preamp it's really really great stuff really built well sounds amazing it kind of does what you think it would do, right? Really amazing stuff. I encourage everyone, if you have a chance to try it out, whether it be at a trade show or maybe even uh, dealership, some some 
I think some of the more boutique kind of dealers like uh, maybe Guitar Sanctuary, right? Uh, maybe uh, Chicago Music Exchange, some of these kinds of places might get to try it. Yeah. And get to try it out. Sounds really cool. The idea of it's really great, though. You could have everything modular, almost like an analog aspects kind of thing. It's really, really cool. Check out what we got going on right here in the live chat. I'm just touching. Okay. Albin Dunford is in the house. Albin, I hope you're well, my friend. He says, when I write songs, I first go to chords and melody, then set a beat or rhythm. How do you approach it? It's a very interesting thing. Sometimes I may only, I may even start with just something simple, um, like a chord, like a single chord. Like a C major seven kind of thing. And I just kind of listen for the things that make that sound interesting to me. So this kind of thing, if I want to write a song, maybe having this, uh, I think about what function, uh, what function a C major seven would have. Like it could also be in that key, right? You could have a D minor. Where the D is a two, uh, two it's like a two five one kind of thing, or I would think about how this major. I would think, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, the guitar tone's so bad. I don't really know what to do about that. Um, maybe unplug the the earphones and go back to the way we were doing it. Would that be better? Would you rather have me go back to that? Uh, the guitar tone being a challenge. Uh, let's see, maybe let's just go back to this. Let me move this. This is, uh, this is what we're dealing with right here. Can you still hear my voice? Uh, can you still hear my voice if I do it this way? The spoken, so yeah, it's like we're kind of serving two masters here. How's this? This is the, this is the problem and the solution. When you're on the road, this right here um, is what I use. It's just a simple little bit for a size comparison. It's so small. Let me set it down at the floor and see if you guys can still hear it. Let's see how this works. Is that good on the guitar? Like if I'm playing the guitar through there. Is that the kind of thing? Will that work? That kind of thing? Is that a better, better overall kind of thing? Okay, so we're talking about like what function that C, C major seven might have. And to me, when I start writing, I start listening for different chord tones. And I don't just think of what chord I'm playing being the one chord. I think about what could that what could that be? Like C major seven means like a B and E minor. I see this E minor triad. I could also see the C major seven groove kind of going in a different way and being maybe a resolution for something that's an A minor. Like we have a.
so to me, it's like when I'm writing, I, I kind of think about hearing tones first, like hearing really cool, interesting. Um, that's a neat sound, you know, where you have those really close. That'd be an example of like how I wrote uh, the front of uh, Beyond the Reef. So Beyond the Reef has a really interesting front end where I have this like uh, A minor nine kind of sound. Uh, And then I see that this section as an A flat major seven, right? Or a C minor over A flat. So, so the harmony is moving up in minor thirds. joining us I'm actually not at home I am in Jamaica so uh, taking a little time here to do a live stream from Jamaica cheers to Vidami for allowing us to make this happen uh, Vidami is a fantastic tool uh, that allows you to speed up and slow down anything like let's say you want to learn this lick right here cool major seven lick we're talking about major seven this thing So if you want to learn that, I'll give it to you slow. And then you can use your Vidami to clip out what I've just got going on right now. Yeah, brought to you by Vidami and Red Stripe. Now you can use it to clip out what we got going on and you can learn more about the, the, the Vidami at their website, which is vidami.com, right? Go there. You can also put in requests for the topics that you want on our weekly live streams. But the cool thing is you can take that section of this live stream, we leave these live streams up, and you can uh, take this, this kind of thing and just snip it out and learn it. And this is just a really cool way that I like to play major seven arpeggios that uh, involve this two, one, two kind of shape. And you can uh, cycle them. So there you go. There's uh, I, I saw that uh, awesome on uh, <laughs> on somebody said play something fast. Well, here's some fast stuff, right? <laughs> but so to me, when I listen to different chord voicings and different tonalities, what pick am I using? Not that it's going to make play. This is a got my logo on it there. AndyWoodMusic.com. It's a uh, right there. This is just a black ice. 1.5 millimeter. Uh, this is my case for my I, I, ear pods on the road, you know, with my main man Vader, right? Play some clean guitar chops now, okay? You're, you're very limited on what my amp can do. <laughs> There's my clean guitar tone. So like that's kind of the best I can do with clean guitar tone. live chat here there we go the amp has delay too don't knock it yeah exactly i've got a little bit of slap back yeah a little bit of slap back there being able to uh i'll teach you a little bit of the wheel hoss it's a good thing <laughs>
Ah, não deu pra. So that's the front of the tune wheelhouse, like a bluegrass standard. Right, so you have this kind of thing. Oh, one more time. So you kind of have that thing going on. That head of that tune again. You can learn that using that, that the old Badami. One more time. And I like to do these cross picking patterns on the G to F. The rhythm's like. With that G to F, I like to play, leave that G string open in the middle, and these kind of triads. You can mix those up however you like, right? Stop time. So you kind of have that that kind of bluegrassy banjo-y kind of roll going on throughout that progression. Really nice, nice kind of sound, right? And that's again leaving that G string open in the middle. Let me kind of see if I can kick this down. The G string is open, right, uh, in the middle, and then you have like the F shape, like an F sus two, and a G. First inversion, that's we do third on the bottom. It's like the Hendrix thing. Right? The G first inversion. F, G. Really cool sound, right? And I'm not just going up and down the pattern. I'm mixing it up. Sounds kind of like a banjo thing. Goodness, right? Scott says I'd be at the pool. Man, he's in your room, man. I like to I like to do this stuff, man. I, I love to do this stuff. 
Henry J says, are you into songwriting as well? What's the future path now? Yeah, I'm absolutely into songwriting. I, I love it. I actually prefer that more to being the instrumental guitar thing, truthfully. Um, even in my tunes, like uh, if you have something like, a, like the uh, Forgotten Secrets thing. Uh, let's play it clean. Even just hearing that kind of melody, you know, I hear it like this. You know. That could be a pop tune, right? I love to take tunes that are really super popular and figure out how to make them guitar and instrumental kind of things and blur the lines and that's where a great crafted melody transcends what instrument you played on. Like if you played um, just so good I've never tried to play this as an instrumental I'm just going off of CeeLo Green right like I they were playing at the bar last night yeah. and so you can take the chords and work those in so like Now the four chord, dressing that up with a major seven, and then just using a diminished sub. Treating that as a C sharp major seven. I, I don't, I, or C, C minor seven, right, C sharp minor seven. I don't really know if this is the correct key of the song. I just remember it being close to this last night, pulling this from memory, when I was here in the bar. Right, now we go. That's like a, there's your resolution. And now to the, that kind of A major sub that I have, A major seven. And it helps me think about great songwriting and how it doesn't matter if it's played as an instrumental, if the melody lines are really good, they transcend everything. You can hear that played on piano. You can hear it played on steel drums. You can hear it played on a saxophone, right? Um, what's the other one I heard? Uh, what's another one I heard? Uh, right? I think I heard that last night. That's Sarah Smile. Right, I don't know all the chords. I think it goes. I think it's something like that. Like thinking about those like popular tunes, those top 40 tunes from across the ages, like it could be Stevie Wonder, right? Like, like think about whatever those popular tunes are. Uh, uh, Lady Gaga, I'm just trying to call things from memory. Uh, Whatever those catchy melodies are, 
I encourage everyone to like step outside of the bubble of whatever the kind of music that they listen to and just be aware of all the music that's going on around you on a day-to-day -day basis. What's happening around you uh, on vacation, what's happening around you in your office or what's happening around you, you know, on your work site and then being like, hey, can I remember that melody? Okay, how can I, can I play that on guitar? If I've never even heard it, if I don't, if I'm not sitting here trying to work up an arrangement, you know, is the melody so memorable? Let's go back to the CeeLo melody, right? That's super memorable, right? this stuff in a chill way and not have to put this big pressure on yourself to where everything you know is, two things happen you don't have to put all this pressure on yourself like everything has got to be the Sistine Chapel of performance the other thing is it shows you how great simple melodies are right like that CeeLo tune is just very this the whole time right questions get over here thanks for hanging out today andy what gig are you doing tonight sir please brief us to henry j no gigs tonight no gigs till i get back in town and uh it's back on the album and then we do a good morning america later this month we're going to be playing on good morning america which is really cool and we're going to be doing uh the opry on october 26 which is going to be really cool so be sure to check those out uh, that's with Gary LaVox of Rascal Flats, some fun gigs. And then of course I'm working super hard on the new album. I'm, I'm really excited about that. How to practice arrangements again, daily dose, like start with the melody, like for me, like, or, or, or an obvious section, right? Like a, that's the melody of the Stevie Wonder tune or loose, loose version, the melody, the bass line. Start with those two things, right? And then maybe put in the horns part, so. That one's really hard. I, I wouldn't start with a Stevie Wonder tune to try to do that too. But anyways, the point is, is you can start with simple versions um, well, what's one that we all know and love? Like, uh, you know, when I do Skank Banger, I usually do a long intro for Sweet Child of Mine, and I just allude to the melody, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just like the, the bass line and the, and the chords with the melody. What is the main melody line? What's the simple chord that can go underneath it, right? Like a, maybe you're playing Civil War by Guns N' Roses, right? You got the main melody. Right? So for me, it's like... about the 
melody line. I want to see singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Start on G and bass. Like, right, so so take the melody. of just taking your melody, putting a bass note underneath it. And that's how I would start with all arrangements. And then they can get as complex and as intricate as you want. You can get into full reharmonizations, but it's nice to just start with the melody and the bass part. That's my opinion, at least. That's your foundation. Justin says, hasn't seen me in a couple of weeks. Where you been? We've done these. Only missed one freaking past however long. Been a long time, dude. We've been, we've been knocking them out. Kurt says, still recovering from the beatdown your balls put on my tigers. If you play Rocky Top, I'm out. Oh, man. Don't tempt me with that. Uh, play bass it all the time. Right, a little bit of Rocky Top, right? That's a that's a fun one to really play over because it's got a lot of chord changes, right? So it's really got a lot of chord changes. playing some bluegrass licks over because there's so so many cool, cool chord changes in that that just aren't one and five right you get the six you get the uh five seven four you gotta really acknowledge all those thirds to make that stuff feel good let's hit some more ch uh, uh questions here this is from emerald fairy when learning a song do you recommend learning it in sections mastering each section at a time or do you got, try to go through the whole thing at first? For me, I try to think about what can I do as a rhythm guitarist and play the rhythm to that. So like if I wanted to learn Rocky Top, and we're just going to pick on Kurt for a little bit because his uh, Tigers got beat. We just want to work on Rocky Top. I would just look at playing the rhythm to that. Like playing the bass lines, like proper bluegrass rhythm. We're doing the bass line. Mm -hmm. 
And I would work my way through that tune all the way as a rhythm guitarist. And then I would start thinking about what I would need to do to play lead over it. Or whether it's really not playing along with the guitar. <laughs> better on that B. B string was a little wonky. And so like, if I want to play lead, then I'd work on the melody line. And then I'd learn that in different positions with different chords. I would also do that here. And I would learn all the different ways around it, you know. Then I would start working on some loose improvisation. Take it slow, work my way through it until I was super comfortable with, with the tempo and the song and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, definitely looking at it from a rhythm player's perspective first. Uh, Tom says, sorry I'm not commenting much because my asthma hit me today. Join the session. Thanks for hanging out with us, Tom. Uh, appreciate you being here. Also, make sure that uh, even though I don't have my rig around me and the Vidami in front of me and all this stuff, make sure that you are going to Vidami.com. Make sure to go over there, save yourself a little bit of cash on uh, getting that Woodshed Live code. Uh, Jim Dover's in the house. I guess my Gamecocks will get whooped by our balls pretty soon. Here's hoping. Here's hoping, Jim. All right. Let's, let's go down. Emerald here said uh, that that's that was the last song. It was uh, Emerald's question. Try to go through it songs at a time. Uh, all right, yeah. Let's kick open the floor for a few more questions here. I'm gonna open up my my good old Instagram because I had a few that were uh, lined up. Let's see. All right, all right. Scrolling down. Oh, it's not going to load because I'm not online. Dadgummit. I wanted it to. All right, you guys are going to have to drive the questions because I've got my iPad hooked up to the Wi-Fi, and if I hook my phone up to it at the same time, the Wi-Fi signal is not strong enough to run both items. So we're just at the mercy of one item at a time. However, I'm pleased that we were able to hang out and do a little fellowship here uh, via the World Wide Web, courtesy of Red Stripe, Vidami, and uh, Jamaica, being out here in Jamaica. Gonna be uh, doing some hanging. Again, it was really cool last night to hear just some local music and then those guys taking pop tunes, uh, things like CeeLo and things like, uh, you know, Hall and & Oates and, and Superstition and all these tunes and playing them in the local flavor. You know, I love cultural music and I love hearing it when it's authentic. And man, it's almost like this trip, even though I'm not working, I sh I'm, I'm like taking mental notes uh, for all the things that are in inspiring from a musical standpoint down here. Barry says, do you have a favorite way of picking or hold it differently for different uh, speeds? Um, 
In general, I hold the pick like this, and that allows about this much pick to hang through the bottom. And then I can chicken pick through that, you know. Ah, one more time. Right. So that kind of technique right there allows you to kind of see how I'm able to just, I'm, I'm not clawing at the guitar, it's just kind of right there ready to go. Yeah, sure, Jim. Jim's saying, can I, can I teach Walt Hurst the most? I don't have a capo with me, so you need to put the capo on uh, fret number one, okay? So fret number one, the song is actually an F. Let's see. The song is an F, right? But we're going to play it out of E. But just put a capo on and do everything I'm doing in E. I'll do it out of F. That's how that riff is up to speed. part and this is what I play live I have this melody line that's like this um, I'm gonna take, take it down here where maybe it's like uh, right so that's the fiddle part but that's what I play live so you have Quest on the old what hurts the most uh, please use the amp sorry Steve Tang all I've got is this right here yeah I have been listening to some reggae while I've been down here you know it's a lot of the like a uh, drop beat uh, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. kind of cool way to add some double stops to those pentatonics. Really popular right now with like guys like Corey Wong and stuff. Right, 
kind of thing. Enjoying some reggae music, needless to say. Uh, the flies are really cool, man. Again, this is the little amp that I just take with me. It's uh, nothing super fancy, but it works for hotel room hangs and uh, the kind of thing we're doing. What's really cool is that I can't do it at the same time because I've got my iPad on, but I can use my iPad and an eighth inch cable and practice along with my own songs, which is really killer. That is really, really a great tool. Love that. Um, so yeah, I can't recommend that enough. And it's super cheap too. Um, yeah. Thank you, Steve. I hope you're well. I hope you are well, my friend. Uh, thank you. You got CDs. Thanks, man. Uh, Alvin says, live or in the studio? Which you prefer the most? I like both for different reasons. I like the studio because I can create this perfectly controlled environment where everything is exactly the way I want it. Everything is, is this, the, the tones are the way I want them. Uh, the drum fills, the bass, everything's working together exactly the way I want it to be. I love live because there's an element of unpredictability and flexibility and improvisation and all these things that go into it. They make live really cool for completely different reasons. It's really, um, it's a love affair with both things. Like I, I, I really do love playing live. It's super fun. I think I prefer playing live. And I'll say this as the reasoning. I think I prefer playing live because I love to be playing music with my buddies and having a connection with a live audience. I think that's what I'm about playing live. The, the connection with a live audience, really powerful. To me, that's, that's, that's really great. That's what makes music a language. You know, when you're when you're kind of doing it by yourself and you're just making uh, making a record alone, you know, you're just kind of trapped in there with your own thoughts, which is cool. But you know, you want that that story, that language message to go out. Uh, so yeah, I think I, I think I'd say I prefer live, but I, I do love playing in the studio. Any further questions here? Uh, again, make sure you go to vidami.com. I can't recommend it enough. Thanks for hanging out with us. Without Madami, we wouldn't be able to put on these kind of uh, live streams. Uh, if, if it's cool with them and it's cool with you, I'll probably do a couple next week. I'll be home all week. We may do an extra one next week just for fun. Live is an immediate response from your fans and on the fly creativity. Yeah, it's fun because it's in instant. Do you live in the Nashville area? And if so, do you teach anywhere? Jason, I live right outside of Nashville. I live about two hours from Nashville. Um, I do teach teach but not in a specific place i just teach via my patreon that is patreon.com slash andywood music if you chime in there and you sign up for the monster rig of doom you get one 30 minute lesson via zoom a month you also get access to four weekly live zoom master classes that happen every week and then you also get access to over 600 videos so patreon.com slash andywood music is where all the instructional stuff goes uh, that's all. Thank you, Chuck. That's where all of the uh, everything funnels uh, as far as ed education and stuff like that. Yeah. A moonlight beach walk. <laughs> yeah, I will. Yeah. Dancing in the moonlight. You know, we need some like little river band and that kind of stuff playing in the background, right? You know, walking through the dark, dancing in the moonlight, reminiscing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't see Randy in here until he just sneaks in. He's, he's like lurking. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Hope everyone is having a great day. Uh, thanks for joining me for this little Island Edition. Uh, island Edition Q&A. Tattoo's healing up nicely. So she's starting to look good. It's going to be really cool when we get it finished. You can kind of see where it's going to come in. Um, yeah, any, any further questions? I'm not in a hurry to just turn it off. Um, yeah, it's going to look good, Troy. Yeah, I think it's going to look nice. You know, get it all done. I got another nine hours or so to go. Uh, but yeah, I was actually texting Ben, El er, ben Eller earlier. He's like, hey, man, you, you unplugging? You, you resetting the brain? I was like, eh, sort of. I don't like to think about it. It was the, it was the album, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, yeah. I, there's one little riff that I just keep playing all the time. Uh, it's on my album. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll show it to you. It's a really cool little. Uh... But I love that. 
It's cool, fat. And then another cool one on the album that's going to be good is uh, this. Like that, that riff is really like on my ears and on my heart a lot lately, right? It's got a really cool set of, using that, using that B string as a pedal tone is really nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a really good one. So I'm excited to get back home and get to that stuff, but I'm also excited just to be down here and kind of absorb some different essence and some different culture and different flavors of life. Uh, I don't want to sound too much like a hippie, but I guess I am. And I think all of these things are really important to one's creativity. It's if you're only, you are what you eat, right? So if you're only listening to the same things, you're only consuming the same things, you're only existing in the same circles and the same players and same musicians, same lifestyle all the time, I think that can be uh, where one gets landlocked and they feel like they're not inspired and they're not moving forward. For me, like being in a different part of the world is, is really important uh, because you just get to absorb a different flavor of existence and a different flavor of life. And I think that being inspirational helps one to step out of our own, our own mindsets and stop playing just for other guitar players. It's like you, you've got to make music for the idea of a musical creation uh, beyond just impressing other guitar players and getting likes on YouTube or Instagram or something like that. There, there's, there's more to it than that. I, I love seeing the growth of some of my favorite musicians. You know, uh, I love to see guys talk about this. By the way, check out Andy Timmons' uh, interview in Guitar World magazine about mental health. Really, really great stuff. Uh, really fantastic uh, thoughts on the idea of social media's influence and things like that in the world. Um, yeah, so that's 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 some good thoughts. You know, it helps you clear the clear the mind a little bit. Man, Tom, I, I, my thoughts are with you, my friend. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you're here hanging out. And uh, for sure, man, if, you know, if you're, if you're on a Patreon, put in a request and I'll do a video for you while I'm down here. I'm going to be doing some, some on the beach videos, uh, talking about maybe some of the influences that I'm stealing while I'm down here. I'm going to be doing some Patreon videos on some of the island style double stops and some of the island style rhythms and teaching how to maybe play in that pocket if you've never tried any of that type of stuff. So, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe tune in over there for some extra added treats. Again, before closing out today, I want to say a special thanks to Vidami. Go to Vidami.com to put in requests for future episodes of our Tuesday Weekly Hang, uh, live at the woodshed. Here the woodshed is a different place, right? And then also, while you're at Vidami, make sure to grab uh, that, 10, that Woodshed Live 10 code and get yourself a discount on the Vidami. It is the tool. Uh, go back and rewatch this. And uh, there's a moment where I teach a really cool major seven lick and I teach some different ideas. You can use those, uh, loop those only. You know what I mean? It's, it's really cool to uh, loop those sections, have something new to, to chew on, right? So I'm getting a couple more questions here. Andy, thoughts on Buckethead? I think he's great. I think it's so fun to watch him like loop something and then start doing nunchucks and like, He's more than being a guitar player. He's an entertainer, and I think that's really important. I also love how self-aware his comedy and his thing is. Outside of that, of course, he I mean, play the crap out of the guitar. Really, really fantastic. Yeah, scroll down, hit that 10% uh, discount code at vidami.com, uh, uh, Woodshed Live 10. Use the code and get you a uh, fantastic little discount. Save some dough. Uh, with that said, yeah, man, we have a... Uh, cool i'm just gonna chill and absorb the culture um man the helm says what are your plans when you get back home anything cool coming up that you can talk about yes a couple of cool things uh one is new album i'll be working on that and also man the helm will be playing uh good morning america as i said that'll be coming up and then we'll also be doing the grand Ole opry this month which is great 
and uh, we'll be playing in Orlando, the Orlando area, beginning of November. So there's a lot of cool different things popping up and getting around. Uh, so yeah, we'll also be hopefully announcing our woodshed, some woodshed lineups for next year, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, really, really got some cool phone calls, cool stuff in the in the oven. Uh, so yeah, that's for Man the Helm. Uh, Alvin says, I'm still battling with playing over changes. Do you reprogram your brain in a new key? That's a tricky question. We'll dive into that question next week. Play over changes. We'll look at that and how that functions from a pop-centric standpoint, a rock-centric standpoint. And then, of course, the jazz bow. That's kind of the default answer is jazz bows. Uh, talking uh, about play, playing, uh, uh, playing over the changes, you know, kind of a jazz thing. Uh, Rob Power says, Skangbanger on Good Morning America. Nice. Gosh, that would be the funniest thing on the planet. And I am an advocate for it. I'm here for it. Cheers to you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Good Morning America, Skangbanger edition coming real soon. We just got to make a couple calls, get those guys uh, hit to what we do with the skank. Uh, Kurt, cheers, my friend. Thank you so much. Check out the Patreon coming out with us. I'm going to make some videos this week on island rhythms and, and the Jamaican influence and musical influence that this is offering. And be sure to go to vidami.com, hit it up, get the uh, get the 10% discount. Also, you know, the thing has tons of features. You can Bluetooth to your, your devices. You can uh, speed up and slow down sections of music. Go check it out. While you're there at vidami.com, make sure to put in uh, subject and topic requests for our weekly hang. And I will see you guys real soon.